Western Conference Podcast brought to you by Dos Cotas Tequila, your boy Big Body Cisco. And I got in studio special guest. I got the lovely Miss Bina Butter in the room. How you doing, Miss Lady? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> and my brother, Mr. Relic Brown, is in the building. How you doing? Good, thank you, Moose. Oh man, we are here, but we are live. And we are here just, you know, shooting the game because I told everybody we had noise and Kenyon on before. But now we gotta get you guys because we missed you guys last time, Bina. <laughs> yes, actually, um, I think I was getting my makeup done. Oh, okay, he was getting so the makeup was being done. So, so the make Brella, how you doing? Very good, very good. Bit tired, but very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you guys are coming back to the states to do some shows. Yes, yes. So yes. tell us about that, Bina. You guys, come, so from Australia, being over there, we're gonna get to the grassroots of it. But tell us how coming to the states, performing, how is it for you? Well, like I guess for myself personally, because. You know, um, my childhood was in California yes. before we moved to Sydney. Um, so it feels very, it's like full circle moments. Yeah. I miss every show. I miss every show in whatever state it is. We're constantly seeing people we know, like my childhood besties from church, yeah. from from school, or just our cousins. And it's it's such a wonderful feeling. The guest place. list is huge, huh? The guest yeah, list. very, very <laughs> <huge>. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Never ending. Relic, what about you, my brother? It's a blessing, man. Yeah. It's a blessing. Uh yeah, everything that Bina said, but in my own words, I just say it's a blessing because just knowing everything that we've been through, or for me personally as an artist, everything that I've been through, you know, I believe everything happens for a reason. So to see the opportunities and where we're at today, it just makes me grateful. Man. Come on, Very man. Grateful. And we're going to get into that. And when I say <laughs> that is because I do want to get to the beginning. You do say you come from California and, you know, we, we need to know that story, Bina. So tell us how this whole musical journey even came about. Well, um, so I was obviously born in, uh, I was born in Brisbane, Australia. Yeah. Shout out to Brisbane. My, <laughs> Brisbane. My hometown. <laughs> I feel like I got a lot of hometowns, but yeah, I was actually um, very fortunate enough to have my primary years yeah. growing up in California in school. And so besides school, we obviously went to church yeah. um, in California and um, our church was in Garden Grove, I believe at Stanford. In Stanford Chapel, yeah. that's where we were. At. Shout out the chapel, you know. <laughs> yeah. Shout out the hood. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yes. Yeah, so obviously, like, like um, a lot of Polynesian families, yeah. you know, our typical upbringing in church, and our parents would, you know, strongly encourage us to participate yeah. in like church choirs, White Sunday, everything and anything that would uh, be about us wor yeah. worshiping. And you know, us as Polynesians, we're storytellers. And Come on. We use our music to do just that. And so growing up, that was one of my outlets. I enjoyed writing. Yeah. Uh, not so much um, singing and performing compared to my brothers. I loved the writing side of things. Oh, so you was on the writing t on the on the writing side of things. <laughs> yeah. I was okay. Writing, really writing. See, yeah. that's big though because a lot of artists today, you know, I'm not not to no knock against them, but they don't write their own stuff nowadays. Mm -hmm. But to hear someone kind of say they started off with the writing, that's big. Yeah, yeah for sure. And like. Obviously now, now that I am do, uh, recording music and yeah. putting it out there, I co-write a lot with um, my brother Kenny. Yeah, he he's big on um, you know Kenyan. He does a lot of producing and writing for. He's like my overall mentor. Yeah, him, um, DJ Noise, my brother Relic, Donnell, like our whole label. They yeah. Just, they the whole help. crew. Yeah, the whole family, mm -hmm. yeah. our Future Now family. Shout the Future out Now family is doing some things. But really, you got to tell me how it was in the Brown household because we're not we're talking about being as being your sister, Ken, also your brother. How did this whole thing, because was it like Joe Jackson saying, look, we're going to put it together at Jackson 5 <laughs> and we're going to have y'all do you. How did that even come about where mom and dad, did they have a huge part in that? Well, I've always said this little story where there was a picture and uh, apparently my mom said that she was carrying me at the time. Yeah. And it's her on stage with a bunch of musicals around him. Wow. And my dad was on the guitar and so it was a cover band. Yeah. I don't know what the event was, but that picture always stays with me because obviously that's where it started from. Like the music came from our parents and that's dope. obviously generations before that. So growing up in a household, like Bina said, you know, we went to church and uh, the only thing she didn't say, which is massive, is my mom was a choir director for every congregation Ooh. we went to. So I love you, mom. Yeah, so um, she was the choir director. She was running things. <laughs> and it was strongly encouraged. Yeah. That's what it was, strongly yeah. encouraged the right uh, to go to all the choirs. Yeah. And to, to be honest, uh, when we were young and growing up, I always, I always felt, man, why me? Why me? Why yeah. was me? You know. Fast forward today, this is what I meant by in the beginning that it's a blessing. It was yeah. a blessing in disguise because it's helping us where we are today. Because what I mean, having that musical background, especially with moms and dad, pops already being in that realm. Did you guys kind of like go in the pecking order? Like, was it you that kind of said, okay, we're gonna start doing performing, you know? And you started doing the writing. Like, how that whole come come down the to, chain? To chain be of honest, uh, it was really. 
me and then slowly my brother and, and, and my sister doing the church choirs. And But in school, I honestly can't remember. I think she'll fix this up. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was doing choir yeah. um, and I did choir like every year in school, even in middle school. And, and most polys, to be honest, we, we didn't really do good. Or at least the polys around me at that time. We weren't too good in theory, but we're there because we just love singing. Absolutely. Tell them, Relic. <laughs> we was messing around, goddamn. We didn't really read notes, but uh, <laughs> we, we had a decent ear. But yeah, yeah so um, just from church to high school, it, it was always like music was always part of me. And this yeah. is all that happened in California? In California. Okay. And I even graduated high school out there. And then we moved to Australia. And uh, that's when Kenyon and Bina, yeah. that's when they started really getting into the music thing. So. It was. Uh, I'm, I've always been a proud brother to see my younger siblings like yeah. come up and do what I've been doing for a long time, come and on. they're doing it a lot better than me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I said, but take it back to being a little before we head to Australia. When you were in California, who was some of like the people you were listening to growing up? You know, being in high school, kind of just going with the music thing. Besides the church stuff, who was you bumping in the room? Well, I guess if I'm starting from her, my parents will. They were always playing Five Star. Ooh, shout out to Five Star. They were playing um, Pacific Soul, yeah. Jamo Jam. Shout out to our uncle, Lopi Mariner. Come on, <laughs> um, shout out Lopi, man. That's family yeah, right Yeah, and then for me personally, like, we didn't have no flash TV, but whatever was on the radio. So I remember when I was little, we'd, we'd bump, like, Sierra, Missy Elliott. Ooh. <laughs> and I felt like that was, like, the Cali girl in me because yeah. I just remember all the times we'll, we'll We'll be blasting their music at, at like our cousin's houses, and we're having like dance battles, yeah. singing battles, rapping battles, like <laughs> <a> just, <laughs> yeah, everything like yeah, the like the source and like the seed of my love for music and everything, yeah. the creativity around it. Honestly, it started from California, and I'm grateful that as I get older, I'm able to reflect more on it and remember, like, wow, like it really started here in California. Come on, get yeah. that Cali love. Yeah, for real. Cali love. What about you, brother? Who was bumping when you was out there in Cali? Man, besides all those artists for the Polynesians, it was Pati. Yeah, oh, Pati, man. and then of course Fiji, we Fiji, and then uh, in high school, in ninth grade to yeah ninth grade onwards, it was always Alo Key, man. Yeah, Alo Key. that's my brother Alo Key right yeah. there, man. That boy is a bad man on that guitar and yes, on vocals, but yes, yes. shout out Alo Key. But see, then we take the transition where you guys are in California, being raised with the music background. Now you guys are going to Australia. Big culture shock. I was talking to Ken about this too as well. Yeah. How did you guys kind of like transition taking that Cali love and what you guys been raised on and now having to be in Australia in a whole different country and kind of transitioning that whole love for the music in that aspect? Well, I think for me, something Relic actually forgot to mention was I was always the little sister. So I was only yeah. like, you know, a primary girl growing up here in California, but I used to watch Relic in school choirs. And that, then I used to watch um, Kenyon yeah. in his middle school talent shows. So, wow. Yeah, and I, Inspiration I don't think, right there. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they remember, but I, I do. And I remember when I uh, moved to Australia, I went straight into high school because um, high school in Australia is 12 years old and up. Yeah. Like 12 to 18. So you don't have no middle school. You go straight there. So, um, so the yeah. wonder years. Yeah. <laughs> Got you wondering around the older kids. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And so I was, I was fortunate enough to have a few um, years in high school with um, Kenyon before yeah. he finished. And he did the same thing. I watched him um, in high school in Australia be a part of talent shows. And then I slowly followed. I yeah. entered some school talent shows or like just showcases yeah. really. And then, yeah, and um, I just watched him grow more and more um, deeply into his music, yeah. How dope is that to kind of be the younger sister looking at her older brothers doing their thing? Like, really, you said you graduated in high school from California. Yeah, I did. So you kind of already in the know when you went to Australia. You kind of had to take a put yourself because it, it couldn't have been easy, the transition from Cali to Australia. Tell us how that for you was something that, that you had to deal with. Yeah, definitely, it definitely was a massive culture shock, like yeah. you said. And once we got to Australia... Obviously, I knew music had to somehow be part of me. Yeah. Uh, couldn't do it for 18 years and then come out there and, you know, just do something different. So, <laughs> obviously, you got a traditional job, you know, a day job. And and then finally, uh, I can't remember what year, to be honest, but I got asked if I want to sing for a cover band in yeah. Sydney. So, Ooh. I went and checked it out. And then that's what I was doing for about five to six years. 
and then here we come, Future Now, and now we're doing originals. See, so you was in the cover <laughs> band already, and I always, I always try to take people through the whole draw because you have the different age groups. So you had Bina, well, she was the younger sister. You had you coming over to Australia. Like, was it different as far as Cali living for you, Relic, to kind of say we can, kind of, we kind of use this Cali love where we did come from and kind of twist it into what Australia is doing at the time. Yeah, for sure. Especially with the selection, like song choices, you know, yeah. the R&B classics, the sing-along songs. So everything that we grew up out here, thankfully, everyone in Australia was already rocking to it. Yeah. So it just became, I guess, natural and easy for me to do the cover band thing because there were all the bangs that we grew up to. Come on. Know, old school. Yeah. <laughs> but you being the writer, Bina, when you kind of like went to Australia, did your writing continue from, from California over to Australia? Yeah. Oh, like, honestly, the writing truly started when I was yeah. like, in high school in Australia but um we would have school laptops and I, I just remember I used to just write I used to write like little poems like not so much raps but I guess raps but I would <laughs> poems or raps yeah. being if you didn't know <laughs> thank you but like do you know what I mean like yeah yeah I know what you mean yeah um <laughs> but you you were sitting there so you was the writer of the bunch like yeah. tell me like where did that kind of like whole you know inspiration to be a writer come from because I know we have mom and pops already in the bands with the music but it has to be something that ticks off in you to kind of say I want to be the one writing these poems and writing what I feel I think it's because I knew I I knew I didn't have the the musical ear that Kenyon had yeah. I knew I couldn't be singing in a choir or cover band like um Keller so all I had was what I had like yeah. a pen and paper or a laptop so I could just express my feelings um, but it's honestly, like I said, it's cool because I forgot all these things until now that we're discussing it. Yeah. I'm like, man, I got to give credit to myself. Yeah. <laughs> I was that seventh grader. Writing, Come on. Writing little. Because seventh graders could be doing other things, really. Trust me, for you to be writing down in your journal and stuff mm -hmm. that your life experience, because like like you said, you're only in seventh grade. Yeah. And with Relic, and you have two older brothers kind of like, you know, I, I'm an older brother as well. So I know we're real protective over our younger sister, especially her being the only girl for our family where, yeah, you know, we, we know where the music kind of like comes from, where like Relic is doing this thing with the cover band. Now, you guys being in Australia, when does it start getting serious where you guys thinking, okay, we might could do this for a living? Relic? For me, it would have been about three years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, because the cover band thing really gave me that uh, performance experience. Yeah. And to be able to interact with the crowd, that's one thing that I'm very grateful for. And my brother just came up to me one day and was like, bro, like, you know, I know you're making money. I know you love singing and you enjoy going doing these gigs. Like, don't you want to, like, do something where you, when your time's up, you got music like, yeah. on, on all platforms for people to play back. And I was thinking, I was like, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a few years. I'm yeah. really comfortable <laughs> here. Uh, you guys, you already got a fan base. You're doing good. I don't know. But my brother's like, bro, you should give it a try. Yeah. And so, you know, although he was a younger brother, but a lot, even with my sister, she's the baby, but I always look up to them as my older siblings yeah, at the time. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Aww, and so, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Just for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't ever say that. Huh? <laughs> nah, I was kidding. But yeah, so. As soon as my brother uh, gave me that little push a couple years ago, then, yeah, we started, and here we are. And I see it because, you know, I've seen a couple of you guys' shows, and I see the stage presence that you have, Relic, because you really command the crowd, and you can tell the season, you know, vet that you yeah. are in it. But then you had little Bro and little Sis come and just shut everything down. Like, banger, Bina, man. when did you know for you that this was something that you might want to do for the rest of your life? I actually never thought I wanted to do it. So um, I've told this story a few times. Yeah. I never get tired of telling it. But <laughs> I was actually saving my mission in the Philippines. And then um, one P day, my Kenyan, my brother, yeah. emailed me and he goes, Oh, hey, sis, remember this draft, this song that we did? Um, it was called Bay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it was just like a draft. I think he said he was pitching that song yeah. to find another female. Uh, vocal like a list. reference track. Yes, yeah. that's yes. what it was. Um, but I had no idea, whatever. So anyways, he emailed me while I was in the Philippines, and he said, I released it. I released the song Bay. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't think much of it until I came home, and I think a couple months later, um, Mark Martins from Future Now, he said, hey, Bina, like, why don't you come and actually perform that one verse that yeah. you have on that song? And I was like, oh, okay, I did. And I believe it was like at the RSL um, Club in Rudy Hill. Yeah. And yeah, and that was the first yeah. time I ever got on stage. Ooh, hold up. So, wait, wait, wait. so instead of making the reference to another artist, he kept you on the track. Yep. Yeah. So come on, little, little bro knew something, Relic. <laughs> little bro knew something. So he was like, you know what? I didn't reference this to nobody. Little yeah. sis got it was doing what she do. So you actually went to go perform this yeah. with Ken. So how did that feeling of being the first time performing, kind of seeing what the crowd reaction is, happen to you? I was actually really, really nervous. But yeah. when I got on stage... I remember, um, who was it? Oh, I think it was Della. 
Delawu. Um, he's one of um, our good family friends, a, a rapper from Western Sydney. He actually said to me, he was like, Bina, before you got on stage, you were like really nervous. Yeah. But then when you were on stage and walked off, you were like chilling. Come I on. think I was very comfortable. Yeah. That was my first time putting myself in that environment and, you know, that stage setting and all that. And then from then onwards, I kind of like, I kind of liked performing. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's, <laughs> it's in the blood. It's in the blood yeah. already. Like, so that's bad. just something for you to just say, okay, now I can actually do what me and my brothers are doing yeah. and go from there. So that being the first time you heard yourself on a track with Ken, when did you start saying, okay, I could do this solo thing? Were you always thinking you could be a solo artist? Um, I think after that performance in Rudy Hill, my mind did open up. Yeah. And then I started bringing out all those like poems. And come those on, the book. Writing. <laughs> then I started saying like, oh, come on, Kenny. Like, um, do you reckon I could do this one? And I'll start showing him my drafts. Yeah. And I'll, I remember we released a few on like SoundCloud, just SoundCloud at the Ooh, time. Ooh, the SoundCloud days. Yeah. days though. Yeah. And that was like, uh, I believe 2018. Yeah. And then, yeah, after a few um, tracks on SoundCloud, then we dropped... Um, an Amara Brown cover called Achilles. Yeah. And I feel like Ooh. from then onwards, that's when I actually started becoming somewhat of a recording artist. Yeah. Did you start taking it as, I'm, I'm a solo artist now? Like when yeah. did you start start to hit you and be like, okay, I'm being a butt of the artist? Once we dropped Achilles and we were like very shocked at everyone's um, like response to it. Yeah. Everyone like was vibing with it. And like when people would be like, oh, you you sing that song Achilles. I'm like, well, well, it's a cover. And like, <laughs> I just like rewrote some of the verses. Yeah. But yeah, that's me. And then um, I really started enjoying that my writing is yeah. doing something. And then Come on. started working more with Kenny. And now you guys got to tell me how the whole um, transition with working with DJ Noise went. Really, you got to tell like, especially with you, mean I, I noticed a lot of your songs, as soon as Noise gets a hold of them, it's like it goes to another level. But tell us how that whole kind of like relationship came about. So um, Kenny and Donnell and DJ Noise, yeah. they were already a part of um, a label called Future Now, like got it. our current label. Yes. And then I can't remember the order, but myself and Relic eventually joined. Yeah. And so because they were all boys and already working together, um, we just all started working together. But obviously not by force. If, you know, if Noise doesn't want to work with you, he's yeah. not going to work with you. So I was, I was very grateful that he wanted to like remix our music and then we've been like collabing since then. Yeah. And we actually, Noise actually just dropped a new um, collab just called yesterday, Speechless. Right? Yeah, yeah, yesterday. Come on, man. Yeah, yesterday. Because I'm telling you, th these collab, like the formula is right, right? We talked to Mark, I talk about the future now, but like what you guys got going on right now, you guys go to Australia, do what you do. Then you come to the States and kill all of these shows. Mm -hmm. Because I remember the last tour you guys came, I went to a couple of shows and I was sitting, just kind of sat back as kind of knowing music in the game. I was like, dude, you guys got to watch out for these guys because they're going to mm -hmm. do some things. And I talked to Mark, you know, periodically, you know, through WhatsApp. And I just tell him, hey, what, you know, what's Relic up to? <laughs> what's Bean up to? I got to get them on the podcast next time they come. Because the last time when we had Ken and DJ Noise on here, I was telling with Mark too. I said, dude, you guys, I don't think you guys understand what you guys are doing in these state shows where you, the response is ridiculous because now that you guys are touring together, like there's a video, I, I think it's a viral video by now, but a Papua New Guinea show that you guys just did. Yeah. Yeah. Relic, you got to tell us about that whole experience, man. Man, shout out to everyone that came to that show and, and our, our boy Sam out there in PNG. Um, that was definitely, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is for all of us, that was our best, biggest live show, of yeah. headlining show, just us. No other artists on, on the bill, just us and we sold it out. Yeah. Like that's, that's a, you know, it's a flex that I'm very proud Come of. Come on, that's big. Um, it was like 850, 900 people sold out. And the last time that venue sold out was 2016. And it was UB40. Wow. So for them to tell us that fact or that stat, that just goes to show. That got to feel you know, good, man. It's, it's, it's a humbling blessing. And, it, man, it's, it's crazy. There were so many people there. And uh, they were singing along like crazy. It was, it was something that it felt unreal. Yeah. It felt unreal, man. And, and take us to that feeling too, like when they are singing your songs back to you. And I know you guys do a lot of shows, but when you see the crowd word for word, like what's the feeling that goes through you really kind of say, man, this is kind of, like, I don't even have to hit that. I know this crowd got it for me. To be honest, it's like, uh, yeah, you know, it's like <laughs> all those late nights, all those coming from your day job, getting man. to the mic, the studio, it's like, oh, uh, it's yeah. paying off, you know? <laughs> what about you, Bina? Because I've seen the viral video when Lady Love came on. <laughs> they done lost their goddamn minds. Crazy, Tell us how you crazy. was feeling. Um, honestly, I feel like every time I hear the crowd singing, sometimes I just want to move the mic. I just want to listen to yeah. everyone. I really want to just soak in the moment. But obviously, everyone came to watch a show. Yeah. So <laughs> I still got to sing along. But I can't explain it. But often when we're performing and the crowd is really vibing, I feel like... I'm physically there, but mentally, emotionally, I'm out 
with the crowd. Come like, on. Yeah. I wait, like I'm vibing with yeah. them. Like it's just, it's such a, it's such a high. Yeah. That only moments like that can give you. Do you music. guys see live music shows today? Like you guys do the shows now, but were there shows that you guys went to growing up that you could kind of see like, you know, where you guys were singing along to the crowds? Did you ever like go to concerts like that? Or was that mom and pop's thing for you? No, that, that was for me. Yeah. You mean like, felt like I could be that person? Yeah, like yeah, that? yeah. hundred percent. Even from like local cover bands at a yeah. church gig or going to watch our boys, Common Kings, you know? like Come on. Man, when I first seen Common Kings, it was actually in Australia. Yeah. You know? And and when I seen them performing, man, I was like, man, I, I think I could do that. And Come on. the feeling of being able to sing a song on stage, doing what you love, and then hearing people sing along. Yeah. I was like, man, for some reason, I feel like that could be me, you know? That so. back and forth. What about you, Mina? Um, sorry, my mind just went back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> well, what shows have you went to yeah. growing up thinking you could be that person on stage? Oh, okay. So that's why my mind was going back and forth. Because when I was little, we yeah. couldn't afford no concerts. <laughs> okay, so you was watching it on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was on YouTube. I was watching it. On YouTube. <laughs> um, I actually really did enjoy watching Rihanna on yeah. stage. Um, when I was younger. Actually, my first concert was a Beyonce concert, but I was in high school by then. Ooh. Oh, and shout out to Relic, because he actually got me out of school that day, and he paid for that um, ticket. I don't uh, know if I you hope, remember. I hope mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, keep going. They're like, wait a minute, who pulled who? <laughs> yeah. And I'm, like, I'm definitely no Beyonce, for sure. But yeah. I mean, just the... Um, the entertainment side of it and just seeing like how she can connect with her audience and just entertainers in general. Yeah. Like, it made me fall in love with it and seeing that you can connect with the crowd and people from all different shows. Like it's crazy. So you guys are still students of the game, right? Like, so you see, sure. I'm always going to be a student. Of the game. Exactly. And it, and it takes me back to like, when you're talking about seeing comic Kings and when I say being students of the game is because we're watching the Beyonce's, we're watching the Rihanna's, but now we're in an age that we're living in where we're seeing people on stage that are actually our color, our nationality. Sure. And like, tell us how that being in this Polynesian demographic Kind of like it's, it's inspiring to those because now, like you said, you've seen Common Kings up there and now you guys are up there yourselves. Tell me how this poly demographic kind of takes a toll on you guys in a good way. I think the, the, the stereotype out there in the world are big, big islanders, you know, all right, bouncers, security yes. guards, football. Tell them, really. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. We got to embrace what, you know, our strengths. But to be able to be doing what we're doing. I know for a fact if I was inspired by Common Kings and by other artists, many other artists have inspired me, I know for a fact 100% that there's going to be another younger kid yeah. that's going to listen to me, see me live, or any other artist on our team, and just be like, man, I want to do that. Come on. You know, and, and that's for me is like, if the Polynesian community could help bring the other polys up, then we need to do it because we already know all the other nationalities yes. that are killing it in, in all aspects of life. And so... For us to be doing music and not just security guard bouncing or football players or rugby, you know, it, it, it's good. It's yeah. really good because our, our people are talented. Come on. And we, I talked about these stereotypes. Um, I, I was with Dinah Jane. I was telling you being there where we kind of talked. And she kind of went to a whole nother realm where her being with Fifth Harmony, where she was on a whole nother level, mainstream yeah, as far yeah, as that. Yeah. But now that we have where she's going to do her solo thing and come out with her own record label, you as an artist where I talk, talk about with Relic, it's harder for female Polynesian artist to kind of come up in the game. Tell us how your experience has been up to this point. Yeah, for sure. And I, I definitely agree with Dinah, like, and especially obviously like um, everyone's stories is yeah. different. My journey's uh, a lot different. And I would, I guess I would say I'm a late bloomer, but for me, I think it was harder because when we're dealing with, um, you know, there's a lot of kind messages, kind people, but there's a lot of unkind <laughs> messages, a lot of unkind Come on. people. Yeah. But I think for me, the hardest part was I'm, I was dealing with it till now as, as, a, as a wife and yeah. as a mom. And like sometimes it would, it would hit me a certain way compared to like if I try to uh, picture it, man, if. I was doing music if, or if I was popping off when I was single, like how would I handle this? Yeah. And I don't even know. But exactly. I just got to always remind myself that like this day and age, it's very hard, but yeah. like, we got to not only protect ourselves, but we got to protect our kids. Absolutely. And we got to show our kids. And like for me personally, what one of my goals is I want to show my daughter and my son that they can do anything Yeah. before or after marriage, before or during, you know, parenthood. Mm -hmm. like, anything's possible. Yeah. You just got to like, 
Know what you want and focus on it. Absolutely. And that's dope, see, because we talk about being a female artist in, in this realm that we're all in right now, right? But then you also talk about being the mom, being the wife, especially yeah. because in the social media world that we live in, unfortunately, we have those burner accounts that always kind of yeah. like, kind of get to us where I try to tell a lot of artists yeah. that it's going to happen. But tell me how this social media age, have you guys been able to adapt to those messages and to those good messages as well? Are you guys able to sift through those a little bit easier now? I think now compared for myself yeah. now compared to a few few years ago, yes. Um, but there's still a lot of moments I'm like, oh, don't test <laughs> me. I'm gonna step out of my. No, yeah, I was about to say, don't let me, don't let me yeah. show the other meaning that comes out. <laughs> yeah. But um, but I I feel like having um having kids and being married it keeps me grounded. Yeah. And it just reminds me like block out all the outside noise. Absolutely. If they're not paying your bills, especially by their Wonder. opinion. Ooh, and, say it again, man. Know, then don't don't worry about that. Absolutely. Them. Relic, what about you, my brother? Man, as as the oldest of the of the three, you know, I've been through life, and so my skin's thick. And yeah, I've been through enough to be able to. Just, all right, cool. Your words are your words. Yeah, but the truth is, I can shake it off when the, any negative stuff comes my way. But it's when they touch my siblings. You know? The protector, and yeah, the, the protector, older brother. The older brother. Me, yeah, yeah. That's when it's like it gets to me. But uh, I guess we got to understand what we're in is a business at yeah. the end of the day. And we gotta be able to stay professional. As much as the natural man me is like, nah, let me blow this person yeah. back, you know? <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a business and we gotta, we gotta stay professional. So I guess just with time, you know, and experience repetition, like anything else, we're, we're gonna get better at just ignoring it and yeah. moving. And I think that's one thing that you guys are also been learning because with success does come these negative, you know, other unfortunate events that happen. But what you guys are doing now, like I was saying, it's kind of like unheard of nowadays because you guys are on a team where it's siblings. Then you have mm -hmm. like those of DJ Noise and, you know, they're like our brothers now, you know, because you guys have been working together so long. Now, now what, I, what I want to say is because of the success of everybody, how do you guys deal with maybe one person being more successful than the other? Or are you guys kind of taking it as, if Bina wins, we all win? Bina, we'll let you answer that first. I feel like we definitely take it like that. Yeah. If Noise is winning, we're all winning. Come on. If Kenny's winning, we're all winning. If Donnie's winning, we're all winning. Yeah. And for me personally, being the youngest, and I still feel the very, like, like the newest player in this game, <laughs> if you would say, um, I feel like I'm very privileged to be able to, like, sit there and take, take my notes and yeah. like I'm learning every um, best thing about each of the artists and I'm able to apply it and be like okay so if they do it like this I'm gonna do it like Come this on. but like you know like what we were saying earlier despite all the negativity there's always so much positive absolutely like if we try I, it's hard and I'm saying and I struggle myself yeah. but <laughs> if we just focus on all the love that we do get like one thing I love about our people um, yes we can like bring each other down sometimes but when we like support and we yeah. love, we really do like we go all the way. Yeah. Absolutely. And we, we see it we it. see it through there because especially with EM Tongi on American Idol we're talking mm -hmm. about, it just shows America like what we've been dealing with all our lives. Like if there's a support right. system there and if it's in place, it's gonna be balls to the wall and we're Solid. gonna support yeah. each other there. Right. Yeah, you're gonna have those one or two negative comments, but when we come and we come full force, we come in support. Mm -hmm. And you being the big brother relic, tell us how you guys been able to adapt to that. Man, just honestly, uh when, like we, like you mentioned earlier, uh, I'm a student of the game. Yeah. I'm always gonna be a student of the game. But to truly be a student of the game, you know, you gotta set aside your pride. Come on. So being Ooh, older, say that again, you brother. Know I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like being the eldest and um, being a uh, part of Future Now with DJ Noise and our, our brother Donnell Lewis. Donnell Lewis, DJ Noise, Kenny, they've obviously been doing this for so many years yeah. in the original scene. You know what I mean? So they got hella streams, they got hella fans, and yeah. I got my close friends back in Sydney and even here in Kelly, they they constantly joke like, hey, man, how's it feel being in the shadow of your siblings? You know? <laughs> and, and, you know, we, we laugh about it and it's yeah. funny. But, you know, the truth is, like I said, to be a student of the game, you got to set aside your pride. So for me, um, being older and been doing, like, the live band thing, I guess, like, you know, season and, and performing, but seeing these guys when they come out and do the lady love. For yeah, example, come on, man. Everybody's singing word for word in the crowd. And it, it honestly, as a student of the game, it makes me want to go harder, Yeah, you know? And to be able to see it's my siblings and my team, future now, you you got if you're not happy about that, then you, you, you I, I personally think you're in the wrong game, you know, yeah. or you're doing it wrong. Absolutely. So that's how I look at it. Because I think a lot of the I mean, people, don't, some people don't know their roles, mm. and I think once you know you're a role player on a team, you know what your what your role is for the team. Hundred. And I think watching you guys from the outside looking in, I see what you guys are doing. You guys kind of you guys are siblings for damn. You know, so mm -hmm. you being the older brother and you doing what you do, I still see Relic doing his thing. <laughs> and so when you come with that old school flow and you come with that old school flavor, like 
it kind of fills the void of what's not there on other aspects exactly. of what you guys as a team. And that's is. that's what I love is that I, I strongly feel that we all have our own kind of flavor. Yeah, or, you know our own kind of style. So uh, having five artists on Future Now, you know, it's to me, it's like, damn, this is dope. Yeah, like we're not, we're all kind of different. Yeah, like you said so. Yeah, it, it's, it's really cool. Being artists that are all, as a team, do you guys find yourself kind of saying, you know, especially you being a, you kind of being the female part of this, when you want to collab with other artists, do you guys kind of do you take it to the team and say, hey guys, it'd kind of be cool to kind of say, let's collab with this one as a, like a team collective effort, or how does that whole process come about? Oh, definitely, like anything, any yeah. big thing, small thing, I always take it to the team. Yeah, and uh, I think for me personally, I always take it to my brother Kenyon. Yeah. And, and Mark as well, like my, our manager. Yeah. yeah. Like, because I value their opinions the most for, for both things, you know, mm -hmm. like business side of things, I guess, or like politics. And then TJ just knows, um, sorry, Kenyon just knows what, what's best. Yeah. Like for me, or even if I, I object what he's trying to like counsel me, he'll just give me advice and then he'll yeah. allow me to make the right decision. So. We could sit here and say it's roses all day with brothers and sisters, but we also know, because I know because my sister's a little shit sometimes, <laughs> where is the aspect of somebody like Relic or Ken or anybody in the team, when there is something wrong, when do you step up and say, yeah, that ain't it? I mean, do you, <laughs> do you guys have those moments as well? You got to tell us that side as well. Yeah, just a few moments. Yeah. <laughs> just, just a few. No, honestly, I, I think like sometimes my brothers might get sick of me, especially yeah. because we toured together. But honestly, that, that's my role. Yeah. That's like my unofficial role. I'm constantly saying, bro, don't do that. Or bro, don't do that. Hey, why'd you say that to each other? Like, we got to work together. Sometimes, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but sometimes <laughs> I feel like the mom of... Like me and my always, brothers. yeah. She always. got kids, so I, I yeah. feel like it's just yeah. natural for her. And, and I'm, grat <laughs> and I'm grateful that they allow me at times. But obviously, now and then, especially um, really, he'll be like, "Hey, shh, you're still the youngest sister. Yeah. Don't talk to me like Relic that." Said, Look, I, I ain't your kid, damn <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. It's like uh, you only have two, not three. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. But it's so funny. We always joke all the time with like our whole label that man, we should get like some cameras when we go on tour to catch all the like- The reality show. The Ooh, reality everything, all the behind the, the scenes. Come on, that's content that you guys are missing out on. Yeah. Mark, Mark, go ahead and get that together because we're gonna need cameras rolling 24 seven. Speaking of cameras rolling 24 seven with social media that we're talking about, how, Lady Love kind of took off on TikTok, right? And it was like a worldwide phenomenon with, with Lady Love. How do you guys use social media in your advantage nowadays and that you probably wouldn't have before you were an artist? Ooh, um, I think it plays a big role yeah. nowadays. Like literally, um, I feel like that's how most viral songs now grow because of social media. And um, even if you don't want to at yeah. times, because I'm sure people, <laughs> you know, might not, that might not be their thing, but that's how you're going to be able to push it to yes. multiple audiences outside of like sometimes your your main demographic. So you, you got to ride with it. And if you don't like exactly where it's going, then you got to, you know, make yeah. it your own. And just let everyone know, like, hey, like, I'm this artist, that's my song, but this is my style. And Come on. Yeah, and, you know, you'll never know who, like, new fans that you'll gain. Yeah. You know, for Relic? Sure. What was the question again? How are you using social media to your advantage, especially being an artist now? Man, social media is everything these yeah. days, man. But obviously, you know, there's always pros and cons to anything in life, but we just got to be able to understand that it's a business, and in order to grow the business, we got to be active, Yeah. you know, on social media. I'll be honest. I hate posting. <laughs> but yeah, he posts the most. It's, yeah. <laughs> He's I mean, it's another job. Yeah, absolutely. But our manager, Mark Martin, is, yeah. you know, these guys, everyone on the team is like, yeah, man, it's the only way. Social media is yeah. everything today, it's you true. know. It's true. Um, it's, it's not like, you know, DVD players and CDs and cassettes are still yeah. floating around. So everyone's just, bang, Facebook, Instagram, what's on the feed. And yeah. that's, that's how... Our music's really getting out there. And it's crazy how the world works now where that is like the main, you know, yeah. hub now with everything. Social media, you find out something on social media before you find out in actuality of what mm -hmm. it is. But adapting, and I, I come back to you, Beanie, because you have been a better the artist, but then you also have the mother and, and, and wife, right? Yeah. How do you kind of say, okay, this has to be either my artist page or my personal life page. How do you kind of juggle the two? Um, or do you? The The... The truth is, it's a constant struggle of yeah. me trying to juggle. Oh, you see what I did there? Um, <laughs> no, no, no. But honestly, it's a constant struggle trying to like yeah. um, just juggle all of it at the same time. Like so many times, me and my husband are like, okay, let's stop posting of our kids if we're like, you know, starting yeah. to get a lot of nasty messages. But then sometimes we're like, man, like just because we're out here doing music, like why can't we 
just show the world that we love our kids. Yeah. Like not saying a post will justify that, but um, yeah, it's, it's hard sometimes because you want to like live your life normally at times, but then also like you got to remember people come to your social media to look at your music. So um, I think it's every day yeah. for me personally. It's an everyday kind of thing, trying to learn how to balance it. But the overall blessing for me is I have the best support system. Come on. I've got my husband, I've got my brothers, my parents, and I've got the best circle. And I feel like if you have the best support system, you can do anything in life. Telling you that support system is huge, especially in our demographic and especially the way we handle social media nowadays. You guys coming on this tour, we're talking, you guys are in Vegas now, you guys are going all over and doing a lot of other cities. Tell me what's different about Australia shows than it is to the state shows. Relic, we'll start with you. For me personally, we grew up here and the main part of my life uh, and I guess music being instilled in me yeah. started in America, in California. So coming out here and being able to perform where I feel that or I know that the music really started for me, it's it's a uh, it's just it hits different. Yeah, it's a full circle I, I really, moment. Right? I really don't know how to explain it. Yeah. Um. And I mean, it's always a blessing to perform anywhere. Okay. In Australia, New Zealand, America, America. But yeah, being because this is where we grew up, and the main parts of my years uh, was in Kelly, and that's where music started. Yeah. Performing out here and and, and seeing family, friends, and you know people you grew up with being being in the crowd, and then seeing random fans that you I've gained over the years. Man, it's like, wow, this yeah. just hits different. <laughs> and I really don't know how else to explain it. It yeah, actually honest. does hit different. Well, Bina, yeah. what about you? Yeah, um, I guess I would agree um, mainly with what Relic yeah. was saying. So it's a lot more special coming here because like, we'll be performing and like in the crowd, we'll, like what I was saying earlier, yeah. we're seeing all of our childhood besties. Um, but in terms of um, performing in Australia, I, I love it because that that's our current Come homeland. On. Like, and that's my baby's yeah. like, homeland. <laughs> and so, um, but the thing with obviously um, performing in Australia, um, touring in Australia versus touring in USA, it's a lot easier for us because you know, logistics and yeah. we're right there where a lot of time and effort and preparation comes into touring in the, um, in the U.S. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, shout out to our manager. Mark Jess. Martin. Yeah. Shout yeah. out Jess. Mark, man. Well, Mark doing his thing over there. It's not an easy job. Future now, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Especially abroad. So, yeah. Speaking great. speaking of that, and speaking, speaking of the success and new music coming out, what are some collabs in the future that you guys said, okay, look, Bina, if you guys had five artists, not to put you on the spot, that you could work <laughs> with, Mark was like, you know what? I got five artists. You name your five artists that you want to have on your next album. Who would some of the five be? Okay, actually, I actually do talk about this a lot with Kenny, but um, I would definitely want to have my girl Dinah. I love her. Come on. I would definitely want her on my um, EP, on my projects. I would definitely want to work with Standard. Yeah. Oh, come on. Standard doing yeah. their thing. Shout out to them. We've worked together, too. Like, shout out to them. Honestly, I can't wait for the rest of the world to, like, yeah. hear more and more of them. Like, very organic. Um, love them. So, yeah, definitely Dinah, Standard. Um my girl Tree from New Zealand. Man, Tree, that's this I right there, her. man. <laughs> Tree She's doing the her thing. CEO of our Mama's Club. <laughs> 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 um, and honestly, f like just right now, like those those are probably the main people I can think of. Relic, what about you, brother? Hey, man, I hate this. Come on, thing. Mark's trying to say, hey, you, bro, <laughs> you could get collabs with any of these artists. Which ones you you taking right now? Which is the Polynesian community? No, nah, it could be anybody. Any? Well, start with the Polys. Uh, man, one day it would be dope to get a collab with Common Kings. Yeah, um, I've been looking up to them for a while. And always see the, the the king himself, Fiji. You know, come that, on. That, that would be that would be a dream come true. Um, and outside the the poly community, man, Joe. You know, Ooh, hold up, real quick, hold up. <laughs> like somebody not even know what he's talking about. Really talking about Joe, Joe, <laughs> Joe, the one that used to collab with G Unit and all that. Talk about Joe, man. still want to be a player, Joe. Bro, uh, for real, like, cause um, quick quick little story, man. Yeah, we, we jumped in the car one day and. Uh, I just grabbed this CD that was sitting there and it was still wrapped in plastic. Yeah. So it was a brand new CD. I was like, this is my mom's car, Joe. And it was, uh, my name is Joe. Ooh, so it, it classic was, this album right there. there. Looking all sexy and stuff. <laughs> I'm like, why does my mom have this? So anyway, <laughs> I put it in. I put it in and I and I think we we're just waiting for mom to come down and go somewhere. So I'm First of all, you're like, hold up, mom. Hold <laughs> up. Joe? Wait a minute. Mom got Joe in the plastic ready to go. Yeah. And then she got a classic guy. Okay, so, so you, you I, pop I, Joe I in. in. And I'm listening to these songs and I'm like, I, I, obviously I was like, uh, I don't know, 12 or something. Yeah. 15. Um, and so I'm listening to these songs and I'm like, 
man, these are dope songs. And I, was, I never heard of Joe. My mom gets in, and it was like Table for Two was playing. <laughs> Table for Two was playing. Mom gets in, she's like, what is it? Turn this off. And I'm like, mom, it was in your it's car. It's your CD. Yours. And she said, oh, it's just a gift that we, we got at work. Yeah. People were just giving random gifts. I was like, well, ever since that, man, Joe. So Come like, on, man. That's, yeah, a, that's Joe, a legend and, right um, there. Man, who else? Uh, you definitely put us on the spot. <laughs> um, man, I really don't know. But those three. But I see R and B is a, is a huge, you know, um, is inspiring to you. Like I, I feel like I hear a lot of R and B in your music relic, yeah, especially sure. um, expect with you being as well. Where R and B nowadays could be, you know, a form of anything. But I, I hear the the Joes and the music soul childs type riffs type in there. Like, is this something that going forward that you guys still being a student of the game? Are you guys also learning about new artists as you guys go along? We'll start with you, Bina. Like, what are some of the new artists that you guys? Oh, okay, I never heard of them, but now I'm kind of like, okay, I can kind of like vibe to them. Oh, okay. Um, well, I wouldn't say he's a new artist, but like I've definitely been vibing a lot with him more now. But um, Etu. Oh man, shout yeah, out Etu. I love him. Oh, like because obviously, like he had a, a different artist name that would like Eddie Dino. Yeah, yeah, R.I.P. Yeah. to Eddie Dino. But yeah, now yeah. he's Etu. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to say that. but yeah, like um, I just love um, like hearing his new music Come and on, appreciating man. what he does and uh, all his collabs and um, mixes that he yeah. does. Like it's it's awesome to. And I feel he he's actually um, someone that I feel really represented that um, when our music was evolving. Yeah. Yeah, Come on, Etu's really doing his thing. Yeah, he really yeah, I had Etu on the podcast, and we were talking about, like, I asked him about the Eddie Dino thing and where he was saying, oh, that was somebody that was kind of early in his career, and now he's in this stage of it. And with that said, like, do you guys see you guys saying, okay, where is kind of like the older relic? Where's the older Bina going forward? Because you guys had to adapt with the times and you adapt with the touring schedule and being a mom and a wife as well. Where do you see Bina Butter's music going within the next five years, direction wise? Direction wise, straight to heaven. No. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, um, I, can, I can honestly say I, I don't know if yeah. I'm going to. Like I hope to still be doing music, but if uh, my kids if my kids want me to do something else, yeah. if they want to do music and I write for them, I'll I'll do that. Like, Come on, I honestly put them first before my music. That's big, right there. I, I don't mind writing for other people, but yeah. Woo, see, don't, don't say that too loud. Don't say that too loud. Because <laughs> if you guys want to go hit up Mark, me and Mark, we'll get you guys in that <laughs> writing. But, but Relic, yeah. what about you, brother? What do you see your music direction going in the next five years? To be completely honest, my my personal goal is is to be able to get to a point where I can uh, have a band. Yeah, and have a band with me. Like, I love doing this thing with backing tracks and DJ noise. It's my family, you know. Yeah, and I'll always do it. But that's my personal goal is to hopefully in the next couple of years, five years max, I'm at that point where I can, you know, logistically fit a band with me. Yeah, that's 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 the ultimate goal. So, do you guys see you guys sell? You know, being an Australia artist, being from California, um, kind of just basing everything where you guys are crossing over between. You know Australia, New Zealand, and Cal and the states. Like, do you what, what kind of differences do you guys see in the music game today, as far as artists in Australia and artists that are in the are in the states? Kind of like you know of how you guys are being presented and how you guys are being brought out there. Bina, um, sorry, I feel like Relic would be yeah, no, <laughs> Relic Cones because you know older, there's, there's so a difference. I, like, and I always yeah. tell people there's a huge difference between Australia and New Zealand artists, and there is, there and is and sure. the people the way the artists that are in the states are kind of like perceived. And what do you see? Like, is there something more at an advantage in Australia, or is there an advantage in the states? Man, I wish you didn't do that. <laughs> um, you know what? I, I honestly feel that um, it's my just my opinion that New Zealand and Australia, because they're like kind of neighboring countries, yeah. they're not far from each other. They're very, you know, they cross over a lot. Yeah. New Zealand and Australia artists. Sure. I mean, America's a massive country, and there's a bunch of artists. So. I think the only difference is uh, Australia, New Zealand, and so on, like a lot. And yeah. America, not so much, in my opinion. And I might be totally wrong, so forgive me if, yeah. <laughs> if I'm wrong. But that's the only thing I can say because yeah. I'm not going to discredit any country's uh, or artist's hustle. At, Absolutely. Grind, you know? So for me, I, I honestly can't really uh, explain the difference I've seen. Yeah. The only thing I can see is that that's evident is uh, Australia, New Zealand artists. There's a lot of mixing there. Yeah. In America to Australia, New Zealand, not so much. And the reason why I ask that is because, you know, with social media and with the way the music game is now, you guys, we have, we're have having more accessibility to artists like you that we might not have heard of in the States. Mm -hmm. And I say a lot of people that, you know, from Aradna to Sammy J to a lot of people that kind of crossed over to the States is where, 
you know, where we wouldn't have heard of Sammy J, but until he came and people were kind of like the YouTubes, the SoundClouds, and mm -hmm. all these different aspects of it where you started to notice that even artists in Papua New Guinea and, and all these other countries that we're starting to visit where there's artists there that we may not know about that now YouTube is kind of bringing us to it. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. podcasting is bringing us to it. Yeah. Touring is bringing us to it because there's a lot of people that probably didn't go to a being a show, you know, last year. But this year's, oh, they're going to make sure to catch that. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to say where the whole field of music is on a whole different playing field nowadays. Yeah. And you guys still being student of the game, just like you guys kind of have the best of both worlds because you guys started off in yes. Cali and now you guys came to Australia Amen. and now you guys had that Cali love in that game yeah. where it's kind of like where these tours, not everybody could do these tours. Not everybody can go city to city and kind of do that. Like out of these cities you guys got coming up, what's a city that you guys are looking forward to? Bina? Ooh. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again, Alaska. Ooh, Alaska's so a different excited. beast. Let me just tell you, Alaska's a different beast because I myself went and did a show with Common Kings in Alaska and we went to do one city where it was still sunlight like at midnight. It was still, the sun was yeah. still out. And I was I was like, it, it, I'm drunk and it's, it's midnight, <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. But Alaska, that's because have you guys did Alaska yet? Or just no, all, our first. all our first time. Ooh, Alaska gonna be so Alaska, y'all better come with it. Rella, what about you? What city are you looking forward Honestly, to? Honestly, it's, it's Alaska. Wow. I mean, every show I'm, I'm excited for. I'm excited yeah, for. for sure. and, and we got the main two seasons where we got most of our family is, is California, Utah. So obviously, I'm excited for those, but yeah. because it's gonna be our first time. I'm hey, we got family Alaska. in Alaska and Seattle. Don't forget. We polished. We got family yeah. everywhere, being so. <laughs> the majority of the families are like, yeah. yeah. I'm actually excited to see family in Alaska and perform for them. That's yeah, dope. Yeah. That's going to be big. I I'm, I'm, I'm can't wait to see the video of in Alaska because I always tell people whether there's 10 people or 10,000 people, as an artist, you can always perform them. Like there's, like yeah. there's 10,000 people to, there. Yeah. And I think it's a growing thing for you guys where, you know, we still see the bugs and the comic kings that they go on the East Coast and still make a name for themselves because I think. People are scared to go to cities where they don't think they got a lot of support, but I think those are the cities that you kind of have to go to yeah. and have to kind of show what you guys can do because you guys would be surprised out of all these eyes that are on you guys, who's watching and who can kind of like say, hey, we want being out here in New York. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's big for that too. Hey, can what I just say, so yeah. I cut you off because... Shout out to Noise, man. He's about to go to New York for the yes, first time. They are. Come on, big and, shout out DJ and, Noise, man. He's doing and, his and, thing. And they're already selling tickets, so shout out to the team, man. They're doing exactly what you yeah. said. You know, they're stepping out there to the East Coast, so I'm really excited for him. I'm really proud of them, man. Him, yeah, him and Kenya, Noise and Kenya. In Kenya, yeah, my bad. And then um, after this USA tour, um, Noise is actually heading over to the UK. UK. Ooh, come on, Noise. Yeah. See, Another because level. I always say it's a domino effect. Once noise goes out there and kind of show, oh, let me bring the team over here because now you'll hear a relic. You'll hear it being out there in New York. You'll hear him out in the UK. And with an artist watching this podcast, being especially you with, um, with these younger artists, being a female in the game, what advice do you have for a little girl watching this podcast saying, Bina Butt is one of my favorite artists and she wants to be an artist? What kind of advice you have for her? My advice for you would be to not only to never doubt yourself, but don't, don't set a a time frame. Don't set like a countdown. Man, expiration date. Yeah. I see you. Yeah, it can come anytime. Like, yeah. Like I said, for me, it kicked off after I got married, after I had kids. So yeah. It can kick off earlier for you or later, but you know, just be patient, but keep, keep being creative. Stay excited. That's the number one thing to stay excited. Man, excitement is everything. If you ain't excited, you, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Yeah, exactly. Relic, what about you, brother? You got that young artist watching like, man, Relic's one of my favorite artists. <laughs> what advice you got for that kid? Uh, first, they mock you, and then they rock with you. Ooh, you know, come so on. Whatever it is you want to do in life, man, honestly, especially as an artist, music, if it's what you really want to do, expect yeah. the haters, expect the negativity and people to mock you and tease you. But watch those people turn around real quick if you just stick to it. I'm, I'm, we've, we're, we're living it right yeah. now, you know? People that, uh, <laughs> people that you know, I'm close to that uh, were like, kind of like not doubting it, but were like, Oh man, that was all right. But now they're like, bro, I'm so proud of you. It's like, <laughs> to see them change uh, day too. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, that's not the energy you gave me a few years ago. They're like, so, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. was that hating ass mama. Yeah. Okay, I see. But does it feel good to like prove not, and I won't say feel good because I, I probably worded that wrong. Is it good to kind of say when you see those those people that had negative vibes about it and now you see them kind of like transition to what you're doing now? Is that kind of a proud moment to say, I got their ass? It's, a, it's, a, it's another f way of feeling you, Yeah. Man. So in other words, keep getting more energy to keep going. Keep Bina? Going. Keep the same energy. 
Woo, come on, see. I, she was about to go off on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no, Keep that same, same energy. energy. If you don't like us, it's okay. Like, honestly, yeah. it's okay. Because if anything, I feel like it's it's good. If you have haters, you're doing something good. Yep. And if anything, if they don't like your music, they're obviously going to tell people. Man. But also, that's free promo for you. That's networking, I guess. Like, Tell them about the free promo fun. again. Because I don't, think they, I don't think a lot of people understand that all the negativity and that it is free promo. It is free promo. That's why I I don't mind. Like yeah. keep sharing if you don't if you don't like something, um, share it and be like, bro, I hate this. Put it on your story. Put it on your story because yeah, you're doing us favors. So. What do you got coming up next? What new singles dropping? What new albums <laughs> in, in play right now? What do we got? Well, besides the collab that um, Noise just dropped, uh, was it yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday. Um, yesterday. So that one we we've been in the works for a while. So that's um, it's called Speechless. Uh, produced by DJ Noise, featuring myself and Donnell. And then we got, I can't drop any names yet. No, don't but, drop um, the names yet, but just give them a little hint. Just give them a little, little, little something. We're working on my project that I've been saying for almost two years. We're working, but we're Ooh, working on it. Relic, what about you, my brother? Man, my next single, which will be hopefully uploaded and ready to go in a couple weeks, is actually going to be the first song that's uh, written outside of you know me and my siblings. Yeah. It's written by Alo Key. Man, so it's I'm fun. very, very, it's very fun. excited to, Come on. to release. This is gonna be a special one. Yeah, you know, growing up listening to them. So yeah, my next single will be written by Alo Key, um, with the reggae vibes, and my brother's producing it. And um, after that, we got the to do list is massive, man. Yes, yes. we're gonna one one personal f- favorite that I'm looking forward to is uh, the official release of Le Man, uh, a song that Five Stars made pop. Come on, Oz Key, um, even Wayno, they've done yeah. covers, but uh, we're excited to let the world know that our grandfather wrote that song. Come on, say it again. Yeah, we my, we gotta clip this one, really. <laughs> Go on, let them know. My, my, my dad's father, um, Baloney Brown, he wrote the Mossy Knife for a, a guy that came up to him. I honestly can't remember what Nash yeah. was, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't someone. He was dating a someone lady. Wow. Came to my grandfather somehow and asked him, "Can you write a song for a love song for me to sing to my yeah. girl?" Woo. And that's how the song actually came about. And no one really knows that. That's crazy. So when we come to the point where at time we're going to release it, we're going to be very proud of that one. Yeah. And that's going to be me being in Kenyon on it. That's big right there. See, and I always go back to the sibling aspect of this whole thing. Because there's a lot of people where, I can tell you right now, I love my brother and sister, but I don't know if I could be doing this music <laughs> game with them. So what are some of the advantages and disadvantages, Relic, that you guys do have working with your siblings so closely? Uh, it's easy to just say how it is, for yeah. one. Uh, Absolutely, <laughs> but being the, in that shit was weak. I came for hell with you. Then. <laughs> On the flip side, yeah, you know it's it's a uh, yeah. I'm not gonna front. It, it becomes very uh, very heavy, and yeah. you know, and then it becomes a bit hard to um, keep moving. You know, we have a bit of a setback because. You know, we're siblings. Yeah. You know, as most siblings do, you, you fight. There's no beating around the bush well, they with it. Fight. <laughs> <laughs> they fight, fight. But you know, once we wake up and we, we you know, analyze the situation yeah. and who was wrong and what we what we could do to become better, man, it just becomes even stronger. Man. You know? Little sis. Yeah, um, for me, I think the biggest advantage is we're able to learn and grow together yeah. and learn more off of each other. Obviously a disadvantage is we because of, you know, when we clash our human moments our realities is that we learn more about ourselves individually yeah. because we are here fighting. But honestly, <laughs> one day we are going to have a YouTube series. So why not? Curious. Why <laughs> not? If we, why not get the YouTube series and the whole behind the scenes? Mark, I want credit on that one as well. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> Keeping up with the Browns on tour. Keeping up with Future Now. <laughs> Keeping up with the Browns. Because I'm telling the Brown family, I, I, I tell people, a lot of people didn't know that you guys were siblings. A lot of people don't know that the Brown family, you know, they was doing music for a long time and mm. it instilled in their kids and what you guys are doing now. And I, I take it before we get up out of here, Bina, we talk about Dos Gatas, it's called Two Faces. They know the face of Bina Butter. What's a face that people may not know about you? I mean, I know we come and de- dove into a little bit about being a wife and a mother, but what's the second face of Bina a Butter that people may not know? Um... The second face of me is Bina Butta doesn't know her second face of herself. <laughs> I'm still fighting myself. <laughs> if you see me online or just like on shows, if I look confident, honestly, behind it all, like, yeah. there's a lot of insecurities. And yeah, like I said earlier, you have to have that support system. If I didn't have my support system, I would not be able to walk on stage. So yeah, like, don't be fooled by the camera or the photos. Like, I'm just like everyone yeah. else. And we're all like each other. Come struggling, on. You know? Relic. One face is Relic Brown. The other face they may not know is. Man, the very and always nervous Relic Brown. Man. <laughs> when I get on, like, Stress before I come head. on stage, I, I'm honestly, I'll be, I'll be completely honest. Yeah. I'm always nervous before I get on. Small crowd, yeah. big crowd, you know, American mm-hmm. Shelly. But when I get out there, 
I do my very best to make sure that you being a little modest, show. brother, because I don't see you being a little modest because I don't see you rock the crowd. But that's the honest truth, man. Before yeah. I sell a crowd, I'll be on the stage, any stages. I've always got nerves. I, I, yeah. I don't know why. But it's funny because Relic's always the most nervous out of us three, but yet he's the one that actually has the crowd like jumping from beginning to I was to about end. to say, because I haven't seen him on his yeah. show. He's been doing his thing. So the nervous, but like, like I said, people ask all the time, you know, how do you get that nervousness? Well, I just say, look, if I don't do it, somebody else is. And if yeah, somebody don't do it the way I do it, then they're going to, you know, it, it, there's a whole different aspect of it. But you guys are doing your thing right now. And Relic, you especially being the big bro, respect to you as well. Appreciate for being you, a butter, you doing your thing. And I'm just saying, you guys come in here, and I was, we was talking before we got on. This is something that I want people that may not know who Relic Brown is, who may not know who being a butter is. Yeah, they know the songs, but they want to know the person. And that's why I wanted to do this today with you guys. And I appreciate y'all for coming to Man, and thank, thank you. For thank you, us. Western Conference you. and the team behind the scenes. Thank you yeah. so much. Come on. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Being anything you got to say to the to the fans out there before you get up out of here? I just want to say I hope we see y'all at the rest of the USA Tour. And I love y'all. Keep streaming us. Keep following. And can't wait to give y'all more. Come on. <laughs> Relic on you. Man, whatever you guys are doing in life, do it as hard as you can. Tomorrow's never promised. And love your loved ones. And just, yeah. Make sure you make the most of every day. Come on, man. It's good to have Relic Brown being a butter in studio with your boy Big Body Cisco. But always remember, brothers and sisters, you can work together, as you can see in full <laughs> form right here. But you know what? Like I said, follow your dreams. Keep doing what you're doing. Your boy Big Body Cisco. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Yes.